Hello, and welcome to St. Elizabeth Healthcare's preoperative education class for spine surgery. My name is Karen Rasso, and I'm the assistant nurse manager of the inpatient spine and orthopedic unit here at St. Elizabeth Florence. I'm very excited to be able to bring you this education virtually since we're not able to gather at this time. being prepared for your surgery. So one thing we ask every patient to do is to get what we call a partner in care. So a partner in care is nothing legal. It's not a power of attorney or anything like that. It's just who's gonna be your cheerleader during this process. The one to be with you the day of surgery and also the one that's going to be with you when you get home from the hospital um, and just kind of help take care of you. You will go to pre-admission testing. This is where they will do some various blood tests, blood work, um, and you will get to see the anesthesiologist or an anesthesia nurse practitioner. You'll have the opportunity to ask them a lot of questions and they'll talk to you about the medications that you're on, your medical history, and what medications to continue taking, what medications to stop taking, and when to stop taking them what to bring with you to the hospital, an updated list of your home medicines, as well as a list of any medication or food allergies, any legal paperwork that you have, power of attorney, advanced directive, things like that, any braces that your surgeon has provided you, and any paperwork from pre-admission testing. Go ahead and bring those back with you when you come. Last but not least, any clothing or hygiene items that you feel like would make you feel more comfortable, feel free to bring those items. We basically have everything you could possibly need. You're going to be wearing a hospital gown. You're going to have our hospital non-skid socks on. We have toothbrush, toothpaste, comb, um, everything like that. But if there's anything that you would want from home of your own to make you feel more comfortable, please feel free to bring those items. Changes in your health condition. If anything happens between the time you have your pre-admission testing and the date of your surgery, please make sure that you call your surgeon's office and let them know. Even if it's something silly like a GI bug or a respiratory cold, please call and let somebody know. This way we can make sure that we're operating on you when you're at optimal health. That way you can have the best outcomes possible. Day of surgery do's and don'ts. Do wear your hearing aids or any glasses you might need to read. Um, we want to make sure that the morning of surgery you're able to ask any questions you might have, communicate with the doctors and the staff, potentially sign you know a consent form or fill out some last minute paperwork and that you can see and hear everything properly. Make sure you arrive at the time you're instructed to by the office when they call you. Now, with that being said, the time of surgery on surgery day can be flexible. If the case in front of you runs a little long, it might be pushed back a little. If the case in front of you for some reason gets canceled, you might be able to go earlier. So be flexible with your time that day. And then also have a family member or a partner in care with you on the day of surgery. Um, they'll be able to be with you during the whole check-in process. And then we will ask them to return to their vehicle during surgery, but then the surgeon will call and let them know how everything went afterwards. Now for the don'ts. Don't eat or drink anything past midnight unless you're otherwise instructed. You can brush your teeth, but just make sure you don't swallow any of the water. Don't use alcohol or tobacco products for at least 24 hours before surgery. The longer, the better. Don't have any gums, mints, or hard candies the morning of surgery. I know people think this is innocent because you're not technically eating anything, but when you have a piece of candy in your mouth, you do produce more saliva, and then you swallow that saliva and you have extra fluid in your stomach. And our whole goal that morning of surgery is to prevent um, anything from being in your stomach whenever you're put under anesthesia. Last but not least, don't wear any jewelry, finger or toenail polish, acrylic nails or makeup on the day of surgery. So when you arrive at same day surgery, a nurse will check you in, collect any paperwork you brought with you, 
go ahead and put you in a hospital gown and socks and start an IV catheter. They'll go over your admission, um, medical history, your medications, things like that. And during this whole time, you'll be able to have your partner in care with you. When you're all checked in and ready to go, you'll be able to be taken to the holding area. Now, the holding area is where you are going to get to see your surgeon again. You'll be able to talk about the procedure and ask any questions that you might have thought of since the last time that you spoke. Your spine surgeon is gonna do what's called marking the operative site. So he will actually take um, a marker and put his initials on you that you all are both in agreement with the procedure that's being done that day. You'll also be able to meet with the anesthesiologist. They'll go ahead and give you some medicine to help you relax and you'll be able to ask any other questions that you might've thought of. At this point, once you're checked in and ready to go, um, we'll ask your family to return their, to their vehicle until surgery is complete. Now let's talk about spine surgery a little bit. There's three main regions of the spine. So the top portion of the spine, that's your cervical vertebrae. Um, and that's the top seven vertebrae that makes up your neck. The next part of your spine is the thoracic vertebrae. This is your upper back or your thoracic spine. It has a total of 12 vertebrae and they're labeled T1 through T12. Your lower back is also called your lumbar spine. There's a total of five vertebrae and they're labeled L1 through L5. The sacrum, which is um, down more towards your tailbone, that's considered S1. And then your tailbone is also called your coccyx. That's made up of nine vertebrae that are fused together. So it's one solid piece. This is an image of the different components of your spine. So the large square areas there on the left, those are your vertebrae. And as you can see, in between every vertebrae is where you're supposed to have a nice cushion or disc. You can also see on that picture on the left that the yellow straw looking area, that is a nerve and it's coming through a hole and that hole is called a neural foramen. Now, if anything happens and that neural foramen gets um, shrunk a little bit or that opening gets a little bit smaller, that's when your nerve gets pinched and that's when you start to see a lot of problems. There's lots of different types of spine surgery that you can have, um, anything from laminectomies to fusions and then all different locations and regions of the spine. Spine surgery is a decision that only you can make, and it's something that we really ask our patients to go in with a positive attitude, a mental attitude, a good mental attitude, and also good physical conditioning are so important for the healing process after spine surgery. Every surgery is different, so make sure you ask plenty of questions and make sure you're comfortable um, and you have all the answers that you need to go forward. But once you choose to go forward, just make sure you do do so with a great attitude and being as physically fit and prepared for surgery as possible. Now, after surgery, you're going to go to the post anesthesia care unit or the PACU. During this time, you're going to be drowsy and you'll start waking up after surgery. This is when the surgeon's going to call your partner in care and let them know how everything went. In the PACU, they're gonna be monitoring your status really closely. You're still gonna have vital sign machine, you know, taking your vital signs and your blood pressure, and you'll still have more than likely your cardiac monitors on your chest. If you need any pain medicine, just let your nurses know and they'll make sure to get that for you. Once you fill up to it, you'll begin to take ice chips or sips of water if your surgeon and the surgery that you had allows for that. There are some surgeries, um, most of the time when they go in through the stomach to get to your spine, that the surgeons want you not to have anything to eat or drink for a little while afterwards. When you're stable, you're gonna be moved to the spine and orthopedic unit. The spine and orthopedic unit 
is a 15 bed unit at St. Elizabeth Florence, all private rooms, and the average length of stay is one to two nights, depending on what type of spine surgery that you have. We have flat screen televisions and wireless internet, room service called Culinary Creations, open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and guest trays are also available for purchase if you have someone coming and visiting with you. Currently, our visiting hours are 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and a total of two visitors per day. They can come at the same time and they are allowed to come and go. The people that are going to be taking care of you while you're at the hospital, you'll have a nurse and a nursing assistant assigned to you 24-7. In addition to that, someone from our leadership team will be coming in to check on you. So either the manager, the assistant nurse manager, or one of our charge nurses, just to make sure that everything's going okay and see if there's any questions that we can answer. Your surgeon and someone from their team will be around to check on you. A physical therapist will be in to work with you, if not that evening, the morning after. And then someone from our care coordination department will come in and see if there's anything that you need at home. Now, safety is our first priority at St. Elizabeth. We want to make sure that you leave us better off than how you came into us. There's lots of reasons that people aren't always steady on their feet after surgery. You've had anesthesia in your system. More than likely, you know, you've been taking pain medicine. You're probably connected to an IV pump um, and you're just in different surroundings. So for all of those reasons, we really truly ask for you to call us and let us assist you getting up, whether it's getting up to go to the bathroom, getting up to sit in the chair, getting up to walk down the hallway, whatever it might be, just call us and let us make sure that you get there and back safely. Orthopedic equipment. Here's some of the equipment that you might see while you're in the hospital. So the first one is a urinary catheter. Depending on your surgery and depending how long your surgery is, you may or may not have a catheter when you wake up. If you do have a catheter when you wake up, our goal is to get that out as soon as possible. So as soon as you know we're able to mobilize you and get you moving, we'll get that catheter out and we'll go ahead and start taking you to the bathroom. The picture on the right side of your screen is a picture of an incentive spirometer or an IS for short. This is something that we use um, for breathing exercises, and this helps prevent pneumonia after surgery, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. A thrombic pumps are the pumps that if you've ever been in the hospital or had surgery before, we put those on your calves and they pump up every couple minutes and then relax. And just that gentle squeezing on your calves every couple minutes helps promote circulation and blood flow and helps prevent blood clots. TED hose or TED stockings is something else that helps prevent blood clots. Um, and so depending on your surgeon and what their preferences are, you might wake up from surgery and have um, some compression stockings on as well. Ice is something that can be really therapeutic after surgery. So we have ice packs available if needed. You'll obviously have a dressing in place over your surgical incision, and then we will take care of that and tend to that per the surgeon's um, recommendations and what how they like their dressings to be changed. And then not last but not least is braces. Not every surgeon orders braces postoperatively, um, but if your surgeon does want you to have a brace, if that's something that you haven't already brought with you, um, with you the day of surgery, then that's something that we can order and get for you and then help you teach you how to use that and put that on and off. Stairs and canes. So our physical therapists, when they come to work with you, they'll assess your need for any assistive devices. If you have stairs at home, then we'll want to make sure we work with you on stairs at the hospital before you go home. That way we're setting you up for success going home. If you have more than two consecutive steps without a handrail at home, we really recommend having handrails installed prior to surgery. So go ahead and start now looking around your house and seeing what you can do to make your environment safer at home. Let's talk about pain medication. So 
pain medicine, the best way to go about it is to try and do pain medicine at regular intervals. This way, we don't let your pain get under control. Once your pain gets out of control, it's really hard to get your pain back under control. So we would really just rather keep it well managed um, continuously. Pain medicine is something you have to ask for. So pain medicine is ordered on an as needed basis. So really have open communication with your nurse. Let him or her know what you're feeling, how you're feeling, is your pain tolerable? Do you need something? Let us know and we'll be able to administer anything that's available. We normally have two different types of pain medication ordered. We have pain pills, which is always our first line of defense. We'll start there with the pain pills. And then we normally also have some IV pain medication ordered. That way, if the pain pills don't quite make you comfortable, we still have kind of more tricks up our sleeve. When you're getting close to discharge and going home, we will try to wean you off that IV pain medicine um, if you've been using it, because we wanna make sure that your pain's under control on just the pills by themselves, since that's what you're gonna be going home on. Now, any medication has side effects, and it's really important to understand what the side effects are and what to look out for. So that's something that your nurse will be reviewing with you. There are some potential complications after any surgery, not just spine surgery, but we wanna discuss these. That way you're familiar with them going into your surgery and it makes a little bit of sense, the interventions that we do post-op to help prevent these. The first thing I wanna talk about is pneumonia. Now again, pneumonia can be a side effect of any surgery, but things that we do to help prevent pneumonia during your recovery period is coughing and deep breathing. So the big deep breaths that you can take and coughing up any phlegm or mucus that might be sitting in your throat or in your lungs. An IS or an incentive spirometer, that is a breathing exercise. That is a toy to help you take those big deep breaths. You want to inflate your lungs. You want to, you know, open up everything and get any mucus or any phlegm up and out of your lungs. That way it's not just setting in there. Early mobility, getting up and getting moving is the best thing you can possibly do for yourself after surgery. Mouth care twice a day, rinsing and brushing your teeth, making sure any bacteria or germs in your mouth you know, lessons, we can lessen that bacterial load by doing some oral care um, and help prevent pneumonia. And then changing positions often. So at least every two hours moving around so that if you do have a little bit of mucus in your lungs, it's not just staying in the same spot. Next, I wanna talk about blood clots or some people call them DVTs. This again is something that can happen after any surgery. Your signs and symptoms are gonna be redness, swelling, heat, and pain. It can be in any extremity. Um, a lot of people hear about getting blood clots in their calves. So the things that we do to help prevent these is going to be your TED hose or your compression stockings. The boots while you're laying in bed, the boots are the things that squeeze your calves every couple minutes and help circulate your blood. Use of blood thinners if your surgeon feels like it's appropriate. And then frequent ankle pumps. So ankle pumps is exactly what it sounds like. If you take your foot and then you push down like you're pushing on a gas pedal and then bring your toes back up to the sky. As silly as it sounds, just doing a motion like this, which is considered ankle pumps, um, helps circulate your blood and helps prevent blood clots. Now, blood clots can occur in any extremity, but they can also dislodge and go to your heart, your lungs, and your brain. So if at any point in time you have chest pain or shortness of breath, this could be a medical emergency and you need to call 911 immediately. Now, of course, that's once you go home. If you're still at the hospital, you call your nurse to come and assess you and we will um, figure out what's going on. Next, let's talk about infections. So after any surgery, anywhere where you have an incision on your body, the chance of getting an infection is there. In the OR, that is a sterile environment. And that first dressing that they put on in the OR, under there, it's completely sterile. 
the nursing staff will change your dressings per the surgeon's recommendations, per their orders, what they like to have done. But once you go home, if you're changing your dressings at home, make sure that you or whoever's helping you, you're washing your hands before touching your dressing or your incision. Do not apply any lotions, creams, or powders um, to your incision unless approved by your surgeon. Most of the time, I will tell you, the surgeons want their incisions to stay clean and dry. No bathing or soaking in any type of water, whether that be a bathtub, lake, pool, anything at all until approved by your surgeon. They're going to want to make sure that your incision is fully healed before they allow you to submerge and soak in water. And then, of course, also keep your incision covered by clothing because this just helps protect it from just the day-to-day -day dirt and grime. Normal signs and symptoms of infection, I'm sure you're probably all aware of. Redness, swelling, warmth, fever of 101 or greater drainage that is yellow or green or a foul odor. If any of this occurs, please make sure you call your surgeon's office, notify them immediately. Skin issues. So skin breakdown is something that can occur after surgery. Between the anesthesia, makes you kind of crowd drowsy and sleepy, um, plus the pain medicine that you're getting causes you not really to move around as much as you normally do. Because of that, we try to make sure to do everything we can to prevent skin breakdown. Keep your heels off the bed. So normally at the hospital, what we do is we'll put a pillow under your calves. That way your heels aren't laying there on the bed, creating that pressure area. Let your nurse know if you feel like your sheets are wrinkled or if you feel like they're damp for any reason. We'll go ahead, get them all changed out and fixed. Um, we will come in and if we see that it's been two hours or so and you really haven't repositioned yourself in bed, we'll come in and ask if we can help you reposition. Turn you to your side a little bit, put some pillows behind you, make sure you're comfortable. But we just want to rearrange and reposition you to ensure that we're giving different pressure areas breaks. If your surgeon does order a back brace for you, once you go home, you're going to want to make sure that you're assessing your skin under those braces. A lot of times, um, surgeons recommend wearing a soft jersey t-shirt under the brace so that it rubs as little as possible. But even if you wear a t-shirt, you still could get some rubbed, irritated areas. So just make sure you're inspecting your skin at least daily. Drainage. Some drainage from your incision is going to be normal. So if it's clear or if it's blood tinged and it's small amounts, then that is perfectly normal. What we would be concerned about is any fresh bleeding, large amounts of drainage, green or yellow drainage, or drainage with a foul odor. Those are things that you're definitely going to want to call and tell your surgeon about constipation. This is something that nurses talk about a lot, even though a lot of other people don't like to talk about it, but constipation can happen after every surgery. Um, the anesthesia that the anesthesiologist gives you to put you to sleep for surgery, not only does it put your mind and your body to sleep, but it puts your bowels to sleep also. So after any surgery, your bowels sometimes have a hard time waking back up and add in there immobility from not really getting around and moving as much as normal, and um, pain medicine, which pain medicine is notorious for constipating people. Sometimes people have a hard time after surgery. We will go ahead and start you on a bowel regimen when you're in the hospital with stool softeners and just normal over-the-counter laxatives. We want to make sure when you go home, you continue a bowel regimen until you're completely off your pain medicine. The wonderful thing about Orthocency is that they have an after hours um, urgent care. So they are open Monday through Friday until nine o'clock at night. And then Saturday, they even have hours from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, you would just call the 301 bone number, which is the normal Orthocency number, to get a hold of somebody over there. Now, this is just at the Edgewood location. 
discharge. So discharge from the hospital can be a lengthy process because we want to make sure that we're discharging you safely and wanna, we want to make sure that you know, you're checking off all your boxes before you go home. So some of the things you'll need to do before you get home that day, you're going to need to have your pain under control on just pain pills by themselves. You're going to need to be able to eat or drink a little something sufficiently. And then you're also going to need to be able to pee. You don't necessarily have to have a bowel movement before you go home, but you need to be able to pee on your own. Um, it's your responsibility to get transportation home. And if you have any concerns about getting in or out of a vehicle, definitely talk to nursing or physical therapy about those things. And we'll address any concerns and teach you how to properly get in and out of a car without twisting your back. It's really important that you follow um, all the instructions from your therapists and your nurses and your doctors. If you think of any questions regarding your surgical um, experience that you're about to have, um, if it's something surgery related or questions, um, medical questions, then definitely give your surgeon a call at the surgeon's office. But if you have any questions regarding the hospital, um, your stay at the hospital, the unit, our protocols or our policies, please feel free to give us a call. So that 212-5700, that number is for the inpatient spine and orthopedic unit at Florence. That's where you'll be staying after surgery and we can answer any questions you might have about your potential hospital stay. Let's talk about physical and occupational therapy a little bit. So a big question that everybody has before surgery or after surgery is when will my pain go away? So definitely expect some pain and soreness for several weeks after surgery. Everyone is different though. So the amount of pain that you have and how quickly it's gonna go away is gonna vary from patient to patient. The good news is, is that this is surgical pain. This is post-op pain. This will go away, which is different from the pain you are probably experiencing prior to surgery. Um, Post-operative pain is gonna include the surgical site itself, potentially a sore throat from the breathing tube, and then pain related to positioning during surgery. You know, some of these spine surgeries are long surgeries um, and you know, you have to lay certain ways and be positioned. So you might just be sore or stiff afterwards. Eventually though, the goal of surgery is to relieve the pain that you had before surgery and then your surgical pain will go away and you'll be much better off than you were before. Will I need an assistive device after surgery? So you will be up and walking the day of surgery. Um, Evidence-based practice shows that patients do better the earlier they get up and they get mobilized. So unless for some reason it's contraindicated, the nursing staff will get you up and get you moving within eight hours of surgery. Physical therapy will assess you either later that day or the next morning and see how you move, see how you get around and see if you need any assistive devices. If a brace was ordered, um, like I said, you know, sometimes um, patients know beforehand that they're going to need a brace and they bring that with them. Sometimes the surgeon orders it after surgery and then we order it at the hospital and get that for you. But we'll teach you about that and we'll make sure that you know how to wear it as the surgeon has ordered. When will I go home? So the therapist from their vantage point will want you to be able to get in and out of a bed or a chair by yourself safely, be able to walk independently with or without an assistive device. Needing to use an assistive device is not necessarily something that's gonna disqualify you from going home. In order to get you home, we want you to be able to move around steady on your feet and safely. So if that means using a walker, then that is perfectly acceptable. We want you to be able to get on and off the toilet safely and show understanding of the exercises that you're allowed to do and the precautions, the things that you should not do. So talking about the exercises, the things that your therapist wants you to do and direct you to do after surgery, make sure you're doing them on a regular basis. 
The therapist is going to assist you initially, but you have to be able to do them independently for when you go home. This is always a great opportunity to utilize your partner in care, have them come in, have them watch you work with physical therapy. That way, when you go home, again, they're your go-to person for what you should be doing and how you should be doing it. If an exercise ever causes a lot of pain, you should definitely stop and talk to your therapist about it or talk to your surgeon about it. We never, never want to mess up the wonderful surgery that you just had. Recovery tips after surgery. So physical therapy will be in your room. They'll be getting you up and getting you moving. Definitely work with nursing to take your pain medicine so that your pain is under control so that you can better participate in therapy. Spend time out of bed every day. Don't get up by yourself, but call, you know, between your therapist and your nursing staff, get up, get moving, sit in the chair for a little while, go for a walk. That's the best thing you can do for yourself after surgery. Change position, cough, deep breathe every two hours while you're awake, and make sure you're doing those foot and ankle pumps throughout the day. Going home, it's going to be very important that you choose an appropriate vehicle to pick you up from the hospital. So, of course, the nursing staff, we will help you get into whatever vehicle you have um, or you need to use. But if you have something that's more mid-size, that's going to be your best friend. Anything that's too low is going to be very difficult for you to get in and out of. And again, anything that's really big and really high, it's going to be hard for you to climb up in and slide out of for a while. So something mid-size is really, really what you want to do. Again, if you have any concerns on how to get in and out of the vehicle, you talk to nursing and physical therapy and we'll teach you how to do that. Um, if during your hospitalization, we've been utilizing a walker with you, then the care coordination department will help us get you a walker before you go home. That way you have that for home. Make sure once you get home, you have a safe environment. We'll go through it a little bit more in detail here in a minute, um, but there's different things that you can do to ensure that your environment is safe when you get home. A raised toilet seat might be helpful. A shower chair might be helpful. Um, and just making sure that your bathroom is safe, any grab bars or pull bars that you might need installed, and making sure that there's no water spillage or anything that you could slip or fall on. Once you go home, you're potentially going to need assistance for five to seven days after surgery. Between the anesthesia you had, the pain medicines you're going to be on, and your limited mobility initially, it's just a really safe bet to plan on having someone there to assist you. And if you end up not needing it for the full time, then great. But we wanna make sure you have that assistance if you need it. At home, make sure you have good lighting. Be mindful of pets. This is my favorite topic um, because I am just an animal lover. And I know that when you're gone for a couple nights and you come home, your pets are gonna be so excited to see you. Please have somebody go into the house before you put your pets in a room and shut the door. Allow yourself that time to be able to safely get into the house and get seated in a comfortable chair. Then let the pets out, let them come up to you and give you all the love that they've missed the last couple of days. You just know that when they're excited to see you and you're trying to walk through a room, they're just gonna get underfoot and you just do not want anything happening to cause a fall. Adhere to all of the precautions that the nurses and the therapists have taught you after surgery. Avoid low chairs because those are going to be hard to get in and out of. Safe shoes. Um, a lot of times we do see in the hospital patients come in because they've fallen due to like slip-ons or flip-flops or clogs. So really good safe lace-up shoes are just really the best thing for you. Avoid loose flooring and remove throw rugs, anything that could potentially trip you up when you get home. And keep needed items close. So if you're going to be sitting and watching a movie for an hour or two, you know, go ahead and make sure you have a drink and your remote control and the phone next to you and a blanket in case you get cold.
Our care coordination department is absolutely wonderful. And anything that nursing or physical therapy recommends for you in order to make your environment safer once you get home, our care coordination department will be able to look at the type of insurance you have and go about getting those things for you or point you in the right direction for how to get those things. This is the main number for our care coordination department. Um, in case you have any questions at all, 301-2275. Thank you so much for listening to my um, preoperative spine surgery presentation. Um, I really look forward to meeting you in person. Um, and if you have any questions whatsoever um, that I didn't answer in this presentation, please feel free to write down this email address, askortho at stelizabeth.com and send us a message with any questions that you have.